I follow everything. I just, I, I, it just doesn't compute with me to be free will when it's all still determined. I, I agree they're very good at avoiding, but that's just the product of evolution having, mm -hmm. having dealt with this, this sequence of, 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 of material uh, things that have occurred at the subatomic level. Okay, let's, let's see if I can change your mind a little bit about this. Let, and let's make it really personal, okay? You're, you're looking for uh, somebody to, to babysit your, your children. Okay. So you want somebody good. Yeah. You want somebody who is responsible, somebody who will be foresighted, who will think carefully and be reflective and not jump to any bad conclusions, will not be taken in by... by fast-talking people that come to the door and all the rest. So you want a very, very adroit and clever and responsible agent. Now I give you two choices. One of them is a human being, very intelligent human being. The other one is a robot, but a very intelligent robot. In fact, a robot that on our avoidance scale is better than a human being. Determined to be better, but better. So that this is a robot that will be a stunningly resourceful protector of your children. Yeah. More resourceful than the person, because the person you know, gets tired and right. a little bit absent-minded and so forth. But just for the sake of yeah. the example, I'm also going to yeah. suppose that the person is, is not determined, whereas the no, robot no. is. Now, who do you trust your children to? Is it obvious? Tricky. Yeah, it's <laughs> tricky, because you begin to realize that the competence yeah. that that robot is determined to have is the competence that's that what we I want. care about. Yeah, that's right. It's the can-do. Yeah. It, and these competences are simply orthogonal to the question of determinism. They just, they're just not on the same dimension yeah. as the issue of physical determinism. We want that competence. And that competence can be determined to be there and can, and can respond in a determined way to whatever comes down the pike. But if it's a really good way that it's determined to respond, that's what we want. You know, I, if I pose the question the other way, if I did suppose that at the quantum level there was the indeterminism, that really wouldn't give me free exactly. will either. That would just give me some random choice. Exactly. <laughs> now you got two robots. You can, you, yeah, one of them so. has got a quantum randomizer in it, and the other one doesn't. It has just a regular pseudo-random number generator. Which one do you want? <laughs> right, you right. Those are going to be just right, the same. Right, right, right. That, that may be even worse. So I, I hate to tell you the conclusion I seem to be coming to. I'm embarrassed to tell you, but I, 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 I seem to say, I seem to feel that, that if either determinism or indeterminism, if it's all physical, that free will, it, there's something wrong with that definition or, or is there something wrong with free will? Exactly. I can't, I can't deal no. with a traditional definition of free no. will under either scenario, right. determinism or indeterminism, unless I add something extra and some non-physical stuff. Then well, I can get my free will. Well, so much <laughs> the worse for the traditional notion of free will. Okay. Um, I, I think that's right. I think we have to recognize that, sure, there are varieties of free will, the traditional varieties, which who cares whether we've got them. Yeah. The varieties that matter, the varieties of free will worth wanting, as I've said, are com perfectly compatible with determinism. Now, do we have to give up something? Yeah, we have to give up some of the ideology about freedom. Yeah. We also have to give up something, and good riddance to it, about blame and responsibility. We have to realize that being responsible for what you do is not quite as earth-shakingly metaphysically <laughs> awful or, or terrible or wonderful as the tradition would have it. That would scare some people. I think so. They want to be absolutist about responsibility. And I'm saying, no, no, we have to, we have, to have a tempered modulated concept of responsibility. It's still responsibility. It's mm. actually very hard to tell from all but the most uh, arduous <laughs> traditional notions of responsibility. Mm. I mean, the idea of just in the eyes of God, <laughs> sin, uh, uh, that has to go. Uh, but what we replace it with is still a very rich and familiar concept. It's the idea that, first of all, we want to be held responsible. Why? Because we have a society in which 
if you're responsible, you get to do the sorts of things you want to do. And if you're not, you're <laughs> you're either locked right. up or put in hospital or not allowed to drive a car or whatever. So people will take responsibility because they want the benefits, and so they should, that come with being deemed a responsible mm -hmm. agent. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't have to worry about people always saying, well, I was determined, so of course I'm not responsible. You say, all right, so you were determined, so you're not responsible, so we'll take away your driver's license, we'll lock you up where you won't do anything. And we were determined to do that. And, and we're determined to do that, and we don't want that. So people, if given a choice, take responsibility if they're normal. Mm. If they're not normal, they can't, and we have to treat those people differently. It certainly seems that this concept of free will under the pressure of a, uh, uh, of a science-driven determinism is an important probe of, of the nature of who we are. I think so. I think that um, we're terribly afraid, and not irrationally afraid, that, that we might learn too much about ourselves, that we might uncover some dread secret about the springs of our own abilities and we might mm. learn that we're fooling ourselves about who and what we are. That is a very unsettling thought. And I think we have to take that seriously. I think that to scoff at that and just laugh it off is a mistake. So I've done that. I've thought very <laughs> hard about it and I come back with some good news. And that is we're not deluded about our sense of our own capacity. We are determined to be the masters of our fate to a surprisingly gratifying degree. And we can be held responsible, not for everything. And in the end, we're not 100% responsible for being responsible. <laughs> we couldn't be. Those absolute notions have to give way. This is part of the the message of naturalism. You have to get rid of those absolutes.